Hello and welcome to First Geek 411. I'm your host, Cameron Franklin, and this is episode 172. There we go. I was waiting for the audio to kick in on stream before I muted it. Um, with me, as always, from the Great Wide North, Shanine, how are you doing today? Doing pretty good. <laughs> Are we doing the whole spiel again? I, I don't know. <laughs> well, whatever not. your heart tells you. <laughs> so we had technical difficulties. This is take two. Um, thank you, Chunk the Hut, for catching in chat. That audio was messing up. We appreciate you a lot. So big preach. Uh, um, also with us is Emma. How are you doing today? Hey, doing pretty good, although I don't accept orca whale deniers in this household. <laughs> I'm See, just saying, pandas. if orca whales were dolphins they would be half dolphin in their name. They are sea pandas. I mean, that too. They are but not... the reason they're called killer whales is because old-time sailors saw them killing whales. So they yeah. called them whale killers. So that's where the whale comes from. But anyway, I'm doing Makes pretty sense. good. Just spouting random ocean facts over here. <laughs> Chris, do you have a random ocean fact? Oh, also with us is Chris. And do you have a random ocean fact? Uh, no. Okay. I mean, anything that field. looks like a panda is a panda. Is a panda. By, so by, by, raccoons like... are trash pandas. Mm -hmm. Orcas are sea pandas. Sea pandas. And that's yeah. that's their official classification. Yep. Makes Period. sense to me. Fair Makes enough. Sense to me. <laughs> Listeners, out. this week we got new game releases. We got Powerpuff Girls Part 2? Um, and then we have our top three uncommon superheroes. And as always, you can find us on our social media as OneGeek411 on our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and join our Discord server if you would like to chat between shows. You can also send us an email at 1stgeek411 at gmail.com. And you can check out our website, onegeek411.com. Watch live Monday nights at 6.45 Mountain Time for part of that post-show chat. Then you can also find the videos over on our YouTube where you can like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell. And then if you're a podcast listener, you can rate and subscribe wherever it is that you listen to awesome podcasts. And then you can also check out our Redbubble store if you want to get some of that sweet, sweet merch. Let's get into what we have been up to this past week. Emma, why don't you start us off? Okie dokie. So I hopped back on to streaming Subnautica on Thursdays because the couple of weeks before that had been busy. Um, but yeah, that's happening regularly again. And I'm excited to get back into it with y'all. Um, and then we also had book club and that was a lot of fun. Um, talking about Neverwhere. And most of the week for me has just been job hunting, pretty boring. But I did finally finish The Last of Us part one. Ooh. Because I forgot that I was in the middle of it and hadn't played it for like a month and a half, two months. Party. But now it's finished it. I finished it this morning. So, yeah. And what'd you think? Pretty good. I liked it. Um, I don't quite understand why there was initial frustration over part two. Mm -hmm. Because they were on a pretty similar like playing field, like... Like, it was pretty level in my book in terms of <laughs> goodness, greatness. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I liked it. Um, so, quite enjoyable. Nice. I found the giraffes again because <laughs> I forgot to save. <laughs> I'm also going to be completely honest with you all. I completely forgot Book Club was this past week. <laughs> like, no. time has been a blur. Lots happened. That's okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's been my week. Janine, what have you been up to? Okay. I forgot to mention this last week, but we watched Invincible, which is a superhero cartoon for adults on Prime. And guys, it's so good. <laughs> I've it's heard good so things. Good. I just haven't gotten to it yet. I highly recommend it. Um, basically every voice you hear is someone huge and oh is this, this is what stems from the comment about yeah this is um, the mark yeah. hamill one <laughs> the mark hamill one <laughs> and so, I was just spoiler like, alert mark <laughs> hamill is in there somewhere believe it or not <laughs> try and figure out who he is because 
we were on like the last episode and watching the credits and i was like did that say mark hamill <laughs> and then we I mean, had to go so, look up who genius. he actually voiced <laughs> and then like go back and find a clip and be like it was it are you sure and then we're like oh yeah yeah it was <laughs> but we did not catch it while we were watching it it was crazy but yes super good show um i think i looked it up and it's renewed for at least two more seasons so that would be sweet what platform is it on amazon prime. prime amazon Prime. okay i've mentioned it when it first came out uh i have problems with certain animation aspects of it but all in all it's good it's i also like dark. the animation it's dark it dark. is dark it is dark it's very gory um which i wasn't expecting from a cartoon <laughs> i just but... don't think background should have more detail than their characters mm. it's my gripe that is honestly a decent <gasps> um point <laughs> i disagree depending on how it's done i don't know we enjoyed the animation but yeah it's super good um super twisty basically every episode ended on a cliffhanger and we're, we're like this changes everything what's no, going on take that. <laughs> oh, I've seen... but it's only like eight episodes so you can just watch them all and it's fine yeah i saw like an ad or something for this when I was watching The Boys. So I've seen things for this. I just <laughs> didn't think much of it because. Yeah, I didn't really, I wasn't that into it either. And then my husband kept hearing good things about it and we're like, just give it a try. Okay. Yeah. And then we watched it and we're like, oh, I get it. So yeah, recommend. And then you guys remember how I finished Fairy Tale and said I was going to take a break from anime mm -hmm. in like False. maybe a week or two, yeah. and then so like and two days right. later. <laughs> yeah, proud of you. So proud. <laughs> I'm just like watching anime now. I guess. Oh, I also watched the other Violet Evergarden special. I hadn't watched the second oh. movie. I, I watched that one too. I think it's my least it. favorite Violet Evergarden thing, but I still liked it. So what? Outside of Violet Evergarden, you said you're back watching anime. I'm assuming it's not just the Violet Evergarden special. Yeah, so like two days after I said I was going to take an anime break, my husband's like, let's just watch the first episode of Attack on Titan to see if you like it. So then we watched the first episode, and then we oh, watched Travis. the second episode. <laughs> and now we're almost done the first season, so. <laughs> nice. So yeah, that happened. I'm really liking it. I'm very invested and also have no clue what's going on. Right? That, I think that's why people love it. It's like, I, you don't have to know what's going on. You just pick your characters and go. Hopefully good things happen. <laughs> yeah. My husband has watched all of it that is available already. So yeah, I'll finish he's just up watching it for the second world. time. Should be yeah. And so I'm making a bunch of predictions but he's very good at keeping a straight face. So I never know if I'm right or not. Yeah. I was like 50% right on one thing. So I counted that as a win. It's a good husband. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, there's just a whole bunch of characters that I'm like, I think I love you. And then like two seconds later, I'm like, or are you evil? <laughs> and then like five seconds later, I'm like, no, I do love you actually. And I'm just like super confused about where this is all going. <laughs> so, <laughs> but Armin is for sure my precious small bean, and I love him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's so small and cute. You have questionable taste. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Um, I've also been continuing playing Immortals Phoenix Rising. Update, I've almost finished the first, like, major area. Because there was the first, like, tutorial area, which I've obviously gotten out of. And then we're in the first major area, and I have, like, two vaults left to do. One of which I can't do yet, because I don't have a god power necessary to finish it. The other one says the same thing. But my husband was watching someone do a walkthrough, and he 
had all the things that I had. So there's a chance that I might be able to finish it anyway. He's got to cheese your way through it. Yep. Yeah. Show, show those puzzles who's boss. Pretty <laughs> much. It's just a stamina thing. Mm. And I have mm -hmm. like a crap ton of um, potions. So I should be able to have enough stamina without <laughs> having enough stamina. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Chris, what have you been up to? I nothing nerdy. I've just been running around. It's been nice this weekend, so been a little spending some time with the family and stuff, but I did uh get together with my friend Craig um and start teaching him uh magic or Proud specifically commander, finally, and I gave him a deck. So get him started. Now he has no excuses. <laughs> um but I did also go to a friend's housewarming party this week, uh, which is super cool. Um, finally seeing a ton of people in person. And we mm -hmm. will be resuming our weekly Commander League this week. I'm so excited. What? For me, um, like I said, it's one of those things where like I completely forgot Book Club was in this past week. So like, if it feels like time's been a mystery um and like not really sure what all i did i played a lot of magic arena i got back to mythic um i've been back into hollow knight um, i think i talked about that a couple nights ago or a couple weeks ago where i'm like at the point where it's like i'm just kind of frustrated with the map in the game and having to like double back to find powers um mm -hmm. and so well still bothered by that but now i can't beat this one boss and so I'm just like hitting my head against the wall over and over again, trying to beat this one boss. And so here we are. Um, and um, still really enjoying it. Great game, but man. That was my one big complaint with that um, one Thunder Lotus game. Mm -hmm. With Sundered? Yeah, Sundered. I get it mixed up in my head with their um, Norse one. Mm. So, but... I constantly had to run around trying to figure out where how it is I got to where wherever it was I was. But. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's kind of like one of the challenges of that game is like when the map system isn't clear, because mm -hmm. like I know I think this is one of the things I talked about. And I think Sunder did the same thing where it's like here's just like a hole in the map you can get here somehow, but like you don't necessarily know how to get to that hole like get through there, yeah. and so there's a thing where it's like where I'm at in Hollow Knight, like, I guess one of the few powers I have left to unlock, there's, like, these black pillars, like, black energy pillars, and I had to get this thing that lets me dash through them. But I can't get to that till I can access this one area. But I don't know how to access that area yet. And so it's like, well, here I am. And every time I, like, explore, I keep on going to that one spot because it's an obvious, like, hole in the map, and I keep forgetting that I can't go through this barrier thing. And yeah. then here we are. Um but again, great game, but man, it's a thing. Um, and then um, had a lot of family stuff. My little brother graduated from high school. And so um, that was great. Went to his graduation, family stuff with that. And then um, we had Memorial Day this weekend, I guess today, technically. Um, but because of that, some friends were in town. From, and so we all hung out last night. It was the first time that like I'd gotten to see a lot of my high school friends since covid stuff and so it was really great to see all of them again and hang out and we're all vaccinated so it was like that really weird thing of like we're kind of like that we can be normal but it's really weird to just have normal after a year of not and is so it though? i feel like that's like all my relationships in general like this is the standard approach to my like it's like oh i haven't seen you in a year that's fine nothing's changed That's the introvert versus extrovert experience, though. So. Right. And I mean, I'm not like specifically <laughs> meaning like catching up where we were, that kind of thing, but normal in the sense of like for the past year, we were hesitant about being around people, like yeah. that kind of thing. But now yeah. it's like we can all like hang out at a, in a restaurant together, like that kind of thing. Um, and I'm definitely more with you, Cameron, on that because I may be an introvert, but I'm used <laughs> to people coming in and out of my house all the time. <laughs> so, like, I yeah, may be and I'm wary but of I'm those used people. to people being ex <laughs> like being exposed to people constantly. So I'm just like, oh, 
I can I can stand next to you and in out in the public and not have to have a mask on. <laughs> That's disconcerting. Yeah. Um, but yep. Yeah, other than that, um, pretty normal. Well, we are rewatching New Girl, um, and so we're on season six right now. And so every time I hear that, I just go, "Who's that girl?" It's just in my head. Just I do that all the time, time at work. <laughs> every time. Um, but um, yeah. Um, I think I had something else to say about. Yeah. Oh, we're at the point where Allie is in the story. And so I really like the Allie Winston relationship. And so um, I enjoy these like um, later seasons of the show quite a bit. So but, yeah. with that, let's jump into our news and discussion topics for this week. Emma, why don't you start us off? I had a great week this week <laughs> for one very particular reason. <laughs> and that was we got a good 14 minutes of gameplay for Horizon Forbidden West. And I was very pleased with it. Um, just like even getting anything other than the promotional pictures that we've had in the past or whatever. Um, so we've gotten some new weapons, some new equipment. We get a fun little cool projector glider thing. Mm -hmm. It's a glider, but it looks cool. And we've got sticky bombs to make things sticky and fall over. Mm -hmm. And I like some additions to your spear. So like it's the same spear that Aloy used through the whole first game, except they've added some new stuff to it. And it was just a really fun video. If y'all haven't seen it, go see it because it's like just beautiful. First of all, like I'm so excited. Um, Apparently, the game is centered in San Francisco, um, or what was once San Francisco, um, and there's a mysterious red storm coming to take things over, um, and we have to fix it <laughs> in some way, shape, or form. But yeah, lots of cool new weapons. While we, while it still maintains the basis of the gameplay and um, fighting of the original game, so I'm just excited to see where it goes from there. Um, but what I about the Aloy design controversy? Oh my gosh! I almost don't get to that. Get well, me let's get yeah. started. Um, please don't. I want to. Um, yeah, please yeah. don't. So or I'm really do. excited. That's a big piece of the news. So for the reveal, then we can get to other stuff after we talk through that actual event. Um, I'm really excited, and we had a great conversation in the Discord. Um, so shout out to that um, about this and. Uh, or like while we were watching it. And I'm really excited that, um, Emma, you mentioned the spear quite a bit. Um, I'm really excited that we're going to actually get like a combo system. And so melee isn't like awful. Um, and so I'm really excited that they're, they're bringing in, it looks a lot more like, I don't, I don't know. Um, I want to say like anime -y, where it's, but it's like, in a good way, though. Yeah, in a good way, where in you're like way. slapping things onto the spear mid fight, and that's sending out like energy blasts and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm really excited to see that. We also got to see in the trailer that like the bad guys can somehow control robots now. Yeah, they've so. gained access to overriding robots. Also, there's a raptor robot. Mm -hmm. That was my other favorite part. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so hopefully we did not get a release date, um, and which makes me sad. But I mean, I guess overall isn't that surprising. Yeah. But um, yeah, and then I'll, after, other than that, there was a lot of. I feel like in general, as I watched it, there was a lot of the. This is exactly what I wanted because it had what made Horizon good, but now it looks better. Like we had cool weapons, and now we have more cool weapons. We had like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, and They've so, improved upon a lot of the bases from the first game. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Chris, you want to talk about this controversy? Always. Air quotes controversy. I mean, some of the images they that we did see in the screenshots and, you know. Would you like me to put it plainly for you? <laughs> some white man was annoyed 
that Aloy was based on Celtic features rather than your typical Anglo-Saxon features and was annoyed that she didn't have access to makeup. Okay, I think it's more like other people looked at her and was like, why does she look different than the previous iteration? No, that's that's not the stuff that I've seen controversy right. Therefore, no. I have issues. <laughs> oh, I'm just talking I'm talking about what I saw and I didn't read actually at the Oscar controversies, but like when you pull the com the comparison of the original Horizon to the new stuff, she does have a dis distinctly different like facial feature set and some of the upper the upgrades to graphics can also like with anything when we see transitions Sometimes the increase of detail is lost or like yeah. is too much, and that's that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I understand yeah, so that's that there a completely have been separate thing. Because the, the big controversies came, came around basically, someone posted a how come they made, made Aloy, Aloy look more like a man? She should look more like this, and posted a and this is what Emma was talking about a more of what like a pinup style thing. Yeah. Where where she has makeup, she has like, it's very just not even it's even farther from what she looked like in the first game, and that's yeah. the big controversy that's been going around. I guess yeah. I'm reading completely different articles. Everything is that I've been looking at is just comparing the first Horizon to the gameplay footage of or the footage that we've seen so far from Forbidden West. See, I I mean I didn't notice any in within the the. 14 minutes of play what we did see of her face like I didn't notice any major differences like as you mentioned there is going to be those changes based on transition from one um, sort of system to another in terms of graphical updates and stuff but I still like if you had shown me just like the face without the hair or anything I would have just gone yeah that's Aloy I would have been able to pin it as her character are you sure? Yes. <laughs> like the facial, like in general, from what I'm seeing, like from what I saw, even just like, like first thing I noticed was definitely she has a shorter, rounder face. Yeah. I would have probably said she looks a little chubby, so but I that looks like so I Aloy. don't think I would have said that was distinctly Aloy as a result if I was just looking at faces. Right. But I like, I mean, that's just me personally, but like, it's not something that bothers me because in my head also there is always going to be with video games between a first game and a second game because of the gap of time between the two there is just for me mentally going to be like a yeah there's going to be a graphical difference based on the materials and finances that were available to them so i mean that may just be a me thing um your main but, character shouldn't change that much. Not as I'm much say, as like, I'm I don't, seeing. Like, I mean, and again, I don't think I'm on Emma's side of like, um, and now like, I mean, if you show me the side by sides, sure, I see it. Yeah, I'd but, be able to point out like, but it, this face, this like isn't that, but. the like Spider Man, like completely changing what Peter Parker looked like. That's yeah. what I was gonna say. Yeah. Like True, she's still it's got not, the identifiable but... freckles and yeah. whatever else. Like she, like she, it's again. I, I think it's no similar. I mean, I say this because I just met some or saw some high school friends. Like it's to me, like she doesn't look any different than like they don't look exactly like what they looked like in yeah. high school, but they yeah. still look recognizable as them. Yeah, and it's then, like yeah, basically that. Like if you were to see someone and then like see them again two or three years later, there's going to be some changes to their appearance. I, I don't know. Like I, I'm just more annoyed by this guy over here who's just like, oh, I, I have completely ignored like, anything like that. That's not what I was talking about. I was mostly talking about the side so side annoyed. by side by side like, comparison. Uh, we're not going to go there because Aloy I have doesn't quite opinions. look like Aloy anymore. Um, it's the only place I was going. Uh, and even I, and thank thankfully I got racial tension in chat who agrees who says he was confused when he saw it and she looked super different to him so. Let's go. I guess we'll transition to the next thing. Janine, what you got for us? Okay. Um, well, sadly, this past week, the 
author and artist of The Very Hungry Caterpillar and many other beloved children's classics, died. Um, that's Eric Carl. Um, this guy looks like an awesome grandpa. He's delightful. Um, someone posted on Twitter a video of him and Mr. Rogers, and mm. it's just as delightful as you would imagine. Um, we got to see how he creates his art for the books, and it's just lovely. Such great mm. art. I feel like there's like a gold mine. I mean, in Mr. Rogers clips, but um, <laughs> but in terms of just like having all these like meaningful people like that Mr. Rogers got to have on his shows when you're not focused on like the public persona it's just like we're here to just have cool conversations and stuff like that mm -hmm. and so yeah so yeah that was sad I feel like we're just losing a lot of authors and like especially childhood authors yeah so well, they're old <laughs> <laughs> he was 91 so i guess we're getting to that time yes but so on a completely different note the powerpuff girls live action remake slash continuation whatever it is the pilot is being completely redone. Um, the studio did not want to pick it up when they saw the current state of the pilot. And so they're, they're trying it again. Um, the reason they gave was it was, it might have been too campy. And I was like, no. Yeah, you don't say. Really? <laughs> With a so, concept like this, you can never go camping. Like it didn't seem grounded in reality. And I'm like, is that supposed the to be Powerpuff mm -hmm. Girls? Really? You don't say. So, no. so, so they're gonna try again. I guess. I, I guess <laughs> I, I'll say for me of like, I knew that they were doing this, and I was not even aware that they'd like done a pilot. And then I was listening to the Christian nerd where he kind of goes into it and talks a bit of like some of the stuff. So that, that, that's about my only like actual touch point on this um, was, was what he said in that podcast. But like, I mean, I hopefully it works a second time, question mark. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. In the article I was reading, like they said, they still believe in like the writers and the actors and like mm -hmm. the idea behind it all. And I'm like, that's great. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, a take two's better. Yeah, it has um, Chloe Bennett, um, I believe, as Blossom. And Wait, then, really? Yeah. yeah. And then Donald mm -hmm. Faison is the professor. Wait, Chloe Bennett, like, like Shield. Chloe mm -hmm. Bennett. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. I was gonna say I follow her on Instagram. Dove Cameron but... will be playing Bubbles and <laughs> Yana. Carol, I don't know. Will be, um, what's the third one's name? Buttercup. Buttercup. Yeah. Oh, look at that. The more you know. <laughs> yeah. Personally, I didn't actually watch Powerpuff Girls growing up. So I have no nostalgic connection to this. I'm it was just too kind girly of for me. Watching and seeing just how wrong it can go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's for me, it was one of those shows that like I've seen some of it, but yeah. and I've talked about this with other shows where I would not be surprised if I've seen like 80% of it, nor would I be surprised if I've seen 5% of it. It's one yeah. of those of yeah. like I just have no clue how much of this show is out there. Whereas, but. like, there's Spongebob over here where I just know I've only seen, like, yeah. four actual episodes. <laughs> I just I just hope they do the Rowdy Rough Boys along with <laughs> I've seen plenty of Powderpuff Girls. It's Cartoon Network. 
I can I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good show. Yeah. It was just one that again, it was one that like I mean essentially I feel like in the time period where we didn't have streaming, it was like you just caught such random things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so it's like I don't I don't know how much of this I watched. It was yeah. one of those that like if it was on when I got home from school, I watched it. It's yeah. and it didn't really matter what it was. It's a cartoon was network on. series. There's no sequential storytelling. Right. Yeah. And coming from a household that very much did not believe in having TV time, um, <laughs> we for me we literally only had PBS. So like my entire childhood was PBS. So anything that was outside of that PBS network was like. I saw it at friends' houses or when I was being babysat at someone's houses. So, like, I know I've only seen a minute portion of all these everything else. So I'm just like, huh, I wonder how this mad scientist who's not so (laughs) mad making and adopting three little girls with superpowers is going to turn out as a real-life thing when I have no actual context of the show. (laughs) No. Well, they're, like, teenagers in this, so, I mean... it's yeah, it's different. supposed to be like, edgier, I think. Con- They're conceptually, teenagers, like coming to terms with this is so different. Whereas, like, you know, the original show is them in like kindergarten well, yeah. and flying off but to like, save the town and the mayor. It, it's still like <laughs> that there's still that backstory there, essentially, slash I'm assuming, of like some random guy makes them in a lab accidentally. Sugar, spice, and, and then, everything nice. And then the yeah. super idiot, <laughs> chemical X surprise <laughs> like there's still gonna be that r- certain amount of ridiculous behind it so i mean like all the primary villains are you know a, a monkey with a monkey floating and, brain or whatever and uh the devil character <laughs> um who else uh it's pretty much just them Mostly Mojo Jojo. <laughs> so, what childhood cartoon would you want, or absolutely never, ever, ever want to see a live action remake of? So, I'll say for me, like, there's definitely some that until recently I would have been very afraid of. And so, like, Pokemon was definitely one of those for me of, like, um, I really enjoyed Detective Pikachu, um, but, like, I, it's definitely one of those properties that kind of scares me. Um, and then I also would have said Sonic until recently. Mm-hmm. Um, and so both of those, I think, in terms of um, video game movies, like, handled, and, of course, they like they have their, like, Maybe part of the benefit for them is that they're not just TV series, but uh, they are games first. But And then for me, in terms of would never want to see, um, I think Codename Kids Next Door is one I would never want to see. Like just kind of the like fancifulness of that one that I, I, I feel like it just would not be what I would want to see on the screen, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess for me, this, again, goes back to being a PBS kid. And a lot of the shows that are coming to mind for me are, like, shows that are already, like, if you will, live action shows. So, like, Mr. Rogers and The Big Comfy Couch and Reading Rainbow um, and the one with the lion puppets in the library. Um, that I'm forgetting the name of right now, but it was a family of lions that lived in a library, um, and they were puppets. So, like, a lot of the ones that are coming to mind for me were, like, already existed in that realm of live action. So it's like, well, like, they could get a revamp, but none of them are, like, super, at least for me, things I was super attached to. Um, So I wouldn't really mind one way or the other but i was in terms of ones that i would never want to see a live action show of i was hanging out in the live stream comics in the cross on sunday 
and talking about Calvin and Hobbes with someone else who was there. I think it was uh, Chunk and Lockstudy. Um, and that Calvin and Hobbes was a comic book that I grew up on as a kid. And um, that's one that I would like just want to keep the way it is. And that's going to be the way it is because Bill Watterson is determined not to sell the rights. Um, but it's just like the way that it exists in the medium that it exists in is what brings a lot of the magic of Calvin and Hobbes to that series. Like the watercolor art style really adds to the magic of this kid's creative mind. And then when there's a random shift in art style, it's because he's making up a world inside his head. And it's like this dramatic, I'm thinking of this one page story or whatever, um, where he's like imagining himself growing up and it's like the super fancy calligraphy or whatever, like a lot of that art style for Calvin and Hobbes on the page is what adds to the magic of it. And I don't think that would necessarily translate as well to a live action show, if that were ever a thing that would even be possible to make happen. So, yeah. I, I'm not skeptical of many things going live action because I think live action has a potential, especially with modern graphics and everything that I, I think you do most. Would I go see like anything that's just live action? No, I don't see most live action things in general if it's an adaptation, but I think they all have equal chances to be successful. Mm -hmm. um, I think although like some things just don't make sense. So I would not do Rugrats as a live action series. It's bad enough they're doing like a 3D animation version. It's weird. But. Yeah. That's about it. I don't, I don't, I'm not, I, I'd be almost down to see almost anything come into a live action mix media format anymore. Yeah, I didn't watch a ton of cartoons as a kid, and like almost all of the ones I can think of are entirely animal casts <laughs> and things like that. The which... Sorry, I just thought of that one. <laughs> that was one of my favorites as a kid, which is no surprise to anyone. Yeah. I love too. <laughs> but yeah, like Little Bear and stuff like that. And I don't think that Lion King type live action is live action. <laughs> I would agree for the most part. Still being created somehow. Right. Just photorealistic CGI. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you, I would definitely not want to see Veggie Tales as a live action. <laughs> no. <laughs> That was like one of the few cartoons I watched as a kid because it was like my parents were like, yeah, I think like that. talking vegetables, preaching God's word. Sure. I think <laughs> a mixed media right? version of Veggie Tales would be very entertaining. Mixed media. Yeah. But live action. Eh. Well, I mean, technically a mixed media is going to be a live action. Like you're not doing like live action vegetables like as unless you're doing puppets. But you can have things like that fun. What they did with, um, into the spider verse where it's like the more animated plus like the comic cow like sort of um paper collage you look and stuff but that's like you can do fun stuff like that there's mixed media doesn't have to be just a combination of live action right and but what i'm animation. i guess what i'm specifically referencing is like the mixed media animation and like live so like who framed roger rabbit <laughs> Like that kind of situation, and have like your Veggie Tales interacting with real people. I think that'd be super entertaining. Also, I just have to say, since we're on the subject of Veggie Tales, I don't like that they updated Cordy, but that's just because I'm a '90s kid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And since they said that the reason for redoing it was that it was too campy, um, what are the worst excuses you've heard for delayed or canceled projects? I've got this. 
Um, you have to say Emma. This is your. Like, I've got this. Like Emma will have some. Yeah. I'll say. Well, I've got like, this. Well, she gets that. I'll say for me, it's I'm always bothered when we hear the like creative differences. Just because that it, it's like it always seems like such a cop out, of like just tell us what happened, like. Okay. okay. Hey, James Cameron is being too much of a perfectionist. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally why the Avatar 2 and 3 are being delayed so much. He's being too much of a perfectionist. See, I like creators who are willing to tell the studios to be like, nope, we're taking longer, sorry. <laughs> right. Which is fine. But, like, literally the only reason we've gotten for the delay in big blue people movies is because the director <laughs> is being too particular. Like, we, like... I'm okay with it. <laughs> Give us like something else besides that. Sure. Like, okay. Like add something in addition to that. And then it's like, okay, fine. I get that. But when it's just the director's being too particular, that just feels a bit weak. <laughs> I, I, I get that so. the director wants it like to be in the way that they're like, it is in their head. But when it's been a year since they've wrapped up filming and it's been in post-production for over a year at this point, basically. Give us something more than just that. Please. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, mean, I mean, this is also coming from someone who is actively working towards a career in the industry and is gaining the knowledge and experience in how films are made. Like... Yeah, I just That's prefer just... when studios are okay with things taking longer. Yeah. And being active in and I'm okay with, with too. delays. Like, great. But like, just like and telling producers to it's like no. He's like, You wanna make money? Then let me do this right because we are not getting poor ratings. But then tell your audience that too. But like with more information than just this movie's been delayed yet again. Well, okay, at this rate, it's never going to come out, so we've just given up hope. <laughs> I mean, from from perspectives where we've waited 10 years for things, I I mean... <laughs> the first Avatar almost didn't exist, and now it's a big thing. I think they're just like, yeah, let James Cameron do his thing. <laughs> Takes time. We already know that. I'm just waiting on more of the rings, but they can take as long as they need. Yeah, I mean, I think in general, in in punk, uh, in 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 chat, Travis brings up cyberpunk. There we go. I skipped words, um, and I think that there's like that that weird challenge of sometimes when you're a creative, you do need to get the project done, and you can't just keep pushing things back. Um, and yeah. like, I think to use cyberpunk as, as an example of a game that was announced like seven years ago or whatever, yeah, and happened to come out at console launch of a new console and all those things. And I think had that game not been this super long project, but had been a more like normal development cycle, people would have been a lot more like friendly towards it. Just be, if it was something that hadn't been pushed as hard as it was and constantly delayed and all of these things and at, at some point you do have to like put a stamp on it and say this is this yeah. is where it is um but and here's i guess another reality of the whole industry in terms of both video games and film is that those industries are like 95 percent creatives which means people who have all these brilliant ideas but who suck with time management and who suck with deadlines so if you give them a deadline they're gonna at least give you something <laughs> it may not be up to your standards but they've given you something whereas if you just tell them sure go go about your business as we see with cyberpunk they've been working on it for seven years and when it came out it was like flat right but if you give them some kind of deadline of like a first draft then you're like okay 
like you met the deadline. So now we can go through and make revisions because you gave me something within a deadline. And now you have a second deadline of a patch update or a second edit draft. Like as creatives, as myself being one, like I'm not going to do something effectively and or in a timely manner if I don't have a deadline. Like that's just how the industry works in many ways. So yeah. Janine, what about you? What's your worst excuse? I don't know. I think the worst one is having no excuse where a project is announced and then it just kind of disappears quietly. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> what happened? Mm -hmm. There's not more. Yeah. I think that that can lead to like that mythos around the project too of yeah. like, well, what was it? What could it have been? And so, like, I mean, like, speaking, like, from my, like, perspective, you see that a lot with video games, where we'll get, we would get, like, a teaser for a game, and then it would get canceled. And then that game now gets lifted up for decades as the, like, but this game would have been so cool. Um, people kind of just, like, keep on, like, like it becomes, like, that sacred, sacred cow. There we go. Or, like, in kind of some kind of connection that I don't know how my brain made it. Um, Subnautica Below Zero was originally intended to be a DLC for the main game. But then when they were working on the story they and stuff, they realized that in order to do it the way they wanted it to be, they had to make it its own independent game and sequel to the first game instead of a DLC. So they made that jump from DLC to sequel. Or they thought we could make more money. No, like they've actually come out with it's. It's been known that it was originally intended to be a DLC, right? And then, like, I understand that, but also you'll make more more money off a separate game. Well, yeah. If you already put in the production time, sometimes I mean, it's worth transitioning to, in terms of time and to like and continued support to a DLC. To yes, and what Emma said, mm -hmm. um, we saw this too with the Uncharted Lost Legacy. Where that game was intended to be DLC for Uncharted 4. And then they said this project got way bigger and our original scope is no longer feasible. We're going to release it as a standalone game at a higher price point than we originally said. Right. But we're going to honor everyone that bought in. Yeah. Initially. Before we because, made that jump. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's in that case, it's not. The Subnautica team did a very similar thing of we're yeah. going to honor that price point for those who jumped in beforehand so so it can be a mix of both it's not just well i'm not, I, not I, didn't just mean, price point, like, yeah. I didn't mean that it's just because of price point but it's like when it becomes something it's like yeah you can honor it as a dlc but you've invested more time and resources that it's more feasibly responsible to just release a second game and also you you're start building toward your because now you're also by creating you now you can now your system your software and everything's on a single platform you don't have to worry about going back and updating uh for support for previous versions great topic Shani. great questions as always chris what do you got for us so we got some news from square granted who knows how much of this we'll see in america or worldwide um, but Dragon Quest is celebrating their 35th anniversary, so we got six brand new Dragon Quest titles. We'll probably see two, um, but we got the newest Dragon Quest 12, The Flames of Fate, um, as the next big iteration for the Dragon Quest lineup. Um, we got the next expansion to the Dragon Quest MMO, which we haven't seen in the U.S. It's a Japan... Mm -hmm. Jap uh, it's only available in Japan, but potentially they are doing an offline version of Dragon Quest X that we might actually see uh, as a single player game um, come to the US. That's probably the most promising of the titles besides the mainstream title. Um, and we're getting a HD remake of Dragon Quest III in an Octopath style art 
form. So I'm very interested in that. Um, and then obviously we got some dragon. <laughs> As with Square uh, and their major names, we're se we also got some notice of uh, some mobile games. Uh, dragon Quest Keshi Keshi, which is a mobile puzzle game. Okay. I'll say that sounds like a that sounds either like a puzzler or a cafe game. Right. Yeah. It's one of those. Um, one of those two options. And Dragon Quest Treasures. Um which is kind of a a, tr a treasure hunting based on the uh world of Dragon Quest 11. Um so We'll see. I, I really hope that Dragon Quest Three um, does make it. I wouldn't mind having a new MMO like Dragon, a Dra the Dragon Quest MMO, make it uh, worldwide. Um, unfortunately, for Square's products, they're always big in like Dragon Quest has been big in Japan, nothing but success. But they're unfortunately they're we we see few U.S. Ad adoption. Um, Occasionally, we'll just like they get enough hype that a title does make it. So we did see uh, Eleven um, did make it um, to us, but yeah, I'm, I want to do some slime hunting. For me, another one of those big game reveals that we got this week um, was the gameplay reveal of Far Cry Six. Um, I have never played a Far Cry game, but this might be the one that gets me in. Um, they've kind of always been that series where they've always looked interesting, but I've, I think I've always come out at a time where I've played a different game uh, or something else has come out that's like taken my attention. And so Far Cry 6 will drop on October 7th and will be following um, or will be on the fictional world of Yara. Um, or, and um, it's just basically a place ruled by a dictator. Um, and then you are playing the main character and I'm trying to like skim and get her name real quick. Um, but I am not seeing that readily available game informer. What, what are you doing? Um, but, um, yeah, so you're basically playing a rebel who is standing up against the dictator and is trying to bring down, um, this regime. And so it looks really fun. Um, you have a dog that has like a like the wheelchair for the back legs that can be your companion oh. in the game <laughs> and will run around with you and it's the cutest thing ever. Cameron, and I it, think you have me sold purely on the dog with a wheelchair. Yes. <laughs> um, and this doggo I need in my life, and um, and then there's a bunch of like kind of off the wall guns that like they kind of couch in the story. It seemed to be of like the we're rebels, so we just have to work with what we got. And then what they got are these super off the wall physics de physics defining weapons, but looks interesting to me. Um, and so, did either or any of y'all see the Far Cry Six reveal? Nah, didn't know it was happening. I knew it was happening. Also, I've but... never played Far Cry whatever whatever. Mm -hmm. But after I played Far Cry Five, is like I wasn't as into the Far Cry series. I only played five because quote unquote is based in montana also they got can, the aesthetics I, right just not the geography yeah i just want to put out there watching this character trailer for this one thing i really enjoy about video games is when you have an actor who's voice acting who's decently well known and they base the character model on that actor and you just sort of recognize mm -hmm. oh hey i know that person mm -hmm. Like, and the, their character model looks like them. Like, that's something I just enjoy about games. Like, obviously, like, that's not a requirement for, like, whatever character it is that they're playing. But sometimes it, it, that just happens. Like, they just do it. And it's something that I like. So, like, in A Jedi Fallen Order, the, the holographic guy... The actor for that is an actor in Stargate, and I got really excited because I like would have known him by his voice alone, but his his holograph hologram whatever came up, and I was like, oh hey, it's what's face from Stargate. 
but <laughs> I just like that kind of thing. So that's connected because there's an actor in here. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, continue. <laughs> and so uh, I guess kind of with all of that, um, with this being a like rebel um, against the world type trope, uh, and then kind of thinking about last week, where one of the things that I mentioned with um, Eternals is that I do not like the we watched but didn't interfere trope. Um, I don't really. So my question there is, what is like one of your favorite like plot hook tropes? Um, and what kind of like what is like a story type that can get you engaged um, based on like that like that simple premise? So we're going for preferred rather than dislike. Yes. Okay positives not negatives um because there's definitely negatives i have a gripe with obviously as a story person um i can't think of one off the top of my head i like the true conspiracy trope Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like the, the big, so like the, everyone's bought into the conspiracy, yeah. but it's like, but I know the truth and everyone thinks you're crazy. I love that trope. <laughs> yeah. And you're just trying to figure out how to get the word out and open is everyone's eyes. And you like, so there's like an elaborate plot. I don't know. Those, I like those. I do like in terms of cheesy tropes or relatively, or can be easily cheesy is the trope of um, aliens were here before us <laughs> or like some branch off of that. Like it can go super cheesy, super quickly, which again is something we see with Stargate. Like it's just goes super cheesy, super quickly, but like it's interesting. So it's like, okay, what take are you going to do on this or whatever? Mm -hmm. Like, um, or even, and that can be something that happens. Like aliens were here before us on earth or like in subnautica like you are an essentially an alien on an alien planet but then there's a third group of separate aliens who were there before you who also came from a different planet and you have to figure out who these random mm -hmm. things are that also don't belong there um which subnautica does that pretty well of like you weren't the only intelligent being who happened upon this place um that's one that always gets me interested is, ooh, aliens. <laughs> Shanine, what about you? The first one to come to mind is kind of like the wounded character with a chip on his shoulder, but a heart of gold. <laughs> I don't know. Those Captain Mal type characters always get me. <laughs> I like it. Or like I just thought of another one I like. Um the characters who are perceived as not very smart, but who at just random times pull out really intelligent things from their pockets of just like, oh yeah, what if we do XYZ? And everyone just looks at them and goes, That's actually pretty genius. <laughs> Underappreciated intelligence. <laughs> In chat, um, Travis says, the problem came to me, trope, of just like, I'm just going about my life, and then here was a problem. So basically, what's his face in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? It just all got dumped on him. <laughs> he didn't want it, but he got it. <laughs> well, he just made the right friend. <laughs> yeah. But the led to, he didn't want it. But he got it. <laughs> as well as Richard from Neverwhere. Yep. He didn't want it, but he got it. Listeners, let us know what your favorite tropes are. Um, you can do that, of course, on social media, Discord, all of those things. And so before we get into our top three uncommon superpowers, um, we got some announcements, stream schedule. Um, we can go through order-wise. What are you playing when you're streaming? What all's oh, going on? 
I'm playing Pokemon Snap on tomorrow, Tuesdays. And likely Diablo 3, I don't know. I play what I want. When? Wednesdays. <laughs> I shall be on Thursday, and surprise, surprise, I am going to be jumping back into the deadly ocean in which I adore so much. <laughs> and I will we just saw a building explode, or something. We we watched a building explode, a spaceship, and um, we shall go from there. I will say, I, I, I don't remember if we talked about this like post-show for Book Club or if it was just us chatting, but like when Emma was streaming last Thursday, I had the meeting, so I just had her muted. And so like, I could like see it out of the corner of my eye and like stuff was going on that I had no clue was like Subnautica stuff. And yeah. I'm just like, I'm super in. And yeah, so... it's, there's a surprising amount of like fun sort of storytelling that goes on in Subnautica. Um, I was thinking about it too. A good third of which is very much like based on how much time you've spent in game, which is part of why I haven't been doing a whole lot of prep outside of it. Cause I'm like, I know something's gonna happen that like off screen that I don't want to like just have happen right, randomly but it's a lot of fun so Cameron you should get to playing it at some point for yourself yeah I um I have it I just need As to I actually keep saying, boot it up <laughs> play it for yourself great experience <laughs> 10, out, 10 out of 10 recommend <laughs> Subnautica how many times do I have to say it <laughs> I'll say it is it will probably be the game I start after Hollow Knight yeah. Or when I give up on Hollow Knight. So, um, and then for me, I'll be streaming on Sunday um, back with God of War. And so, and then if you missed our book club um, this past Thursday, it should be up hopefully on YouTube tomorrow. Um, and then our next book is Not All Who Wander Spiritually Are Lost, A Story of Church by Tracy Rowe. Rodez? just roads roads okay that's what that's what i went was like that's what my heart said at first and then i was like uh, <laughs> do not actually know rode um yes yeah, so I, I was like how fancy like are we like what's going on here and so um and so that will be um i guess the 20th right 27th 27th um of may of nope i'm on the wrong month no time is like, a mystery like, the 24th of <laughs> june like, there we go wait, so, what's on the 24th of june book club right oh next book club because <laughs> like, uh, uh, on not who wander like the thing, the thing i forgot wander. where we were on notes okay <laughs> <laughs> so Let's get into our top three uncommon superpowers. Um, we got some responses over in the Discord. Um, Varoth says, for subtle, super, for subtle powers, I always loved Domino from the X universe. Uh, things just kind of fall in place for her. The sheer opportunities for ridiculous fun. Um, and then also says multiple man slash Jamie Madrox, the like being able to clone yourself type character. And so... Um, and then Cross says, my favorite uncommon power um, is muscle mimic. People who can look at some or someone do something such as martial arts, gymnastics, or even plumbing, and then their body can do the same thing. Um, I think those are both really cool examples of like these like really off the like out there superpowers. And I'm all in. So for us, um, Shanine. Why don't you start us off this week? Okay, getting fancy. <laughs> I'm gonna start with one kind of two from fairy tale. <laughs> um, they're they're similar-ish, so they both have to do with writing. Um, Freed has eye magic and letter magic, so he can like write something and then that'll happen basically and levy has something called solid script where she writes the words and they become solid and take on the properties of whatever she's written so yeah i like those powers they're super cool and 
right up my alley. Emma, what about you? So when I was writing my list, the first two that I put down, I looked at and basically ended up combining because I basically just went, you know what? I just want to be a druid. <laughs> so I said that I would, for my number one, basically, I just want to talk to animals and or turn into one. So I'm if I had to pick one, I would say I'd rather turn into an animal than talk to one. So. <laughs> I would say I want to be that one random person who's just running around surprising just want to be people. Beast boy. By... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um my own random, you know, whatever I'm in the mood of, like Yeah, Beast Boy. <laughs> yeah. Um there's a it's a character in Welcome to Night Vale who it's again one of my favorite podcasts, who just transforms into whatever he wants just based on his mood. And it can be anything from like a block to a pterodactyl or whatever. Um, but I sort of base it off of that, but also just turning into animals because that's primarily what I would do with the power. So I would probably spend a good amount of time as a whale <laughs> to no <laughs> one's surprise. <laughs> that's my number one. So for me, I'll go next. Um, the first one that came to mind as I was thinking about this is the um, like explosive sweat that Bakugo has in My Hero Academia. Of like that's just like such a random, um, a random thing, and I really like the idea of like, um, and of course this is just one of the things they do throughout um, My Hero. But the idea that like the grenades on his costume basically just hold his sweat, so that he can then detonate it later. Um, and I just think it's such like an interesting idea um, for how to do that type of power. And so uh, it's not like he doesn't like generate fire. It's just like it just combusts. And <laughs> here we go. Um, and so, yeah. Chris, what do you got? I'm going to go with, well, like, and it's, I think this is mostly uncommon, but like having like actual animal characteristics, not uh, so in my hero's case it's suyu's ability just her her quirk is frog so she can do anything a frog can do mm -hmm. um and I like spider-man she does <laughs> except for spider-man can't do everything a spider can do it's a close enough comparison for those of us who don't watch anime <laughs> it's not close enough because she can literally do everything a frog can do <laughs> and she's very frog-like she can eject and wash her stomach yeah, starfish can do that too, you know. Yeah, but we don't have starfish, man, now do we? <laughs> but we could. Is that a challenge, Chris? <laughs> Absolutely. I've done this before, I'd be willing to I am to do referencing it again. the ability specifically being having all the characteristics of an animal while still being human. Did you know so. a starfish can also essentially replicate but itself? <laughs> her ability frog is uh so obviously enhanced swimming and all of the things, but like she is incredibly powerful despite her quirk just being frog um, um she has like camouflaging abilities and all these other things and also she's just a wonderful character but i think that like realizing how crazy certain attributes in the animal kingdom are as as a superpower is kind of cool to me Now I'm just planning Starfish Man in my head. <laughs> the arch villain of Candy Man. <laughs> They're just nemesis. <laughs> Janine, what's your number two? Okay. My number two is the Umbrella Academy. Um, if I have to pick one, I'm going to pick Allison and just her rumor ability. It's so specific and yet can do basically anything. It's a scary ability. <laughs> it is. Which they super address. terrifying. Yeah. I, I, I think I said this in one of our, like, um, 
Umbrella Academy spoiler cast or something. But like the thing that gets me with that power is like it's so specific. And that's what I love about it. But it's also like, how do you accidentally figure that out? Wait, okay. Sorry, I was minorly distracted. Allison's power is basically Purple Man's power, right? Where it's, it's like it's, she can suggest kinda. something to yeah. someone. Yeah. 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 It's, okay. It's, it's very similar, but hers, she ha- it, it is the. It's tied to she, the phrase. To the phrase, I heard, I heard a rumor. rumor that. Yeah. And yeah. so. Um, but yeah, and so it's like I heard a rumor that you punched yourself in the face, and then yeah. the person like, and so I just she like, has a trigger phrase. Yeah, and the thing that I think is so funny is like that's just such not a normal phrase. Yeah. That like, how would you accidentally figure that out? Yeah. But, <laughs> but maybe that's season three. Like we'll <laughs> eventually figure it out. But that's the backstory I want. Yeah. Is is how did how did they figure that out as the phrase? Um. And so, so I mean, one thing it could be, I don't know how you'd figure it out necessarily, but it, in neurology, words have specific neurons, so they'll trigger certain neurons or specific imagery, so it's possibly that phrase just triggers a specific neuron that activates your ability, and it's Mm -hmm. ultimately set there, and it's, you, essentially, when in terms of neuroplasticity, it's something you'd ultimately choose. But that's my theory. <laughs> Emma, what is your number two? My number two, as always, because in top three, the only rule is that there are no rules. Yep. My number two is that the, it's a little bit of a stretch, but I essentially want to be a dragon rider from the Aragon books. So I wanted to like, as like my power, like be able to mentally connect with a dragon and like converse with that dragon and have a connection and then be able to like use the magic that comes from that connection for good. So basically I just want to be a dragon rider, which is a kind of a power in and of itself. Like who doesn't want to ride a dragon and have their own dragon? Cause that's cool. I like dragons, but um, yeah, it's not the conventional concept of a superpower, but it it is one in my world of like they typically fight for justice and peace within that world, unless you're you fall to the dark side. <laughs> um, but they are essentially um, that world's version of superheroes, so. I want to be a dragon rider, like an Aragon, so. For me, um, mine's kind of a weird one, but it's it's law magic. And so in Magic the Gathering, one of the planes um, has what is essentially law magic, that, that anything that is put into law has like magical binding properties. Um, and it's, uh, of course, obviously terrifying um but um one thing that's really that i like about it is because it's easy to exploit and so basically if you can convince the person who makes the laws to sign something they didn't fully read you can now create a loophole in the rules based on uh it's like you'll see um, there's actually a, a magic story that is built the whole premise of the story is built around a character exploiting somebody to get to create a law with a loophole so that they can break into a place using the law that just passed. Um, and it like sh- makes the walls and the building shift and things like that. Like the, the physical world has to shift around the change in the rules. Um, and I just really like that as this like extremely random like power that is this inherent to this world and how the world is designed. Cameron just wants demon contracts. <laughs> I mean, I will say, like, it's funny you say that because uh, another character from Magic that I really like is Davriel, who his whole story is built around the fact that he basically has tricked demons into signing contracts with him that are beneficial to him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so like, um, and if at any time, if something happens, the demon gets his soul but he has loopholes built into all of these contracts. And so like he has one demon who gets his soul if 
he dies while the demon is trying to protect him. Oh no, if he dies of old age, so the demon has to protect him. That's what it is. Um, but he's already died and been brought back to life once. And so the contract <laughs> technically is void because he's already been previously dead, something like that. And so I do really like that, tro that magic trope of like messing with the, with rules, with those types yeah. of things. So. Chris, what do you got? Uh, <laughs> like the abilities regarding like momentum, like the kind of like juggernaut, I guess, um, where you you have the ability to keep gaining and building momentum, eventually become unstoppable, but also you don't have a way of stopping yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're not careful, you just fly off the earth. <laughs> just keep going around and around, around and around and around, and around, and around, and around, and around. until you reach escape velocity. And just... <laughs> if, you, if you're not careful. <laughs> but kind of like a a play on like in a perfect sealed system this is something that could happen so we're going to give you a power that ignores the abilities like all the other physical ailment preventions and you can potentially do this <laughs> yeah that makes me think of like how crazy like a superpower like not being affected by friction could be Right? We're just like, you know, like we're just not affected by friction. We can just run really fast because friction Wait, doesn't bother run. us. You couldn't run. Oh, you couldn't run because yeah, you, 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 you can't you have no friction. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is how you die. You would just slide everywhere. You'd have to push off stuff. <laughs> that could also be fun. Um, <laughs> yeah. You just ice skate everywhere. Yeah. But except but you can't continue you you just like when you push, you're going in that line until you hit something mm -hmm. else. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sounds okay, a little okay. bit like a curse. Yeah, so, so we're going the other direction power. now. So I'm now imagining like the, the, you also the shepherd's wear crook cane. <laughs> so you'd like grab onto trees and use that to like swing yourself around corners. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so hyped about this. But you couldn't wear clothes. And you also couldn't grip the cane. Well, you, so you could wear clothes because it would just hang off of you. But like off your shoulders, like you've got like it would you've have still you'd got have gravity to, in play. You'd have to have you'd have to apply it in such a way that you can, but you couldn't grip it. Like you'd, you'd have to physically have attach it to you somehow, you and it had to be so you'd have to like use other forms of tension, because yeah. yeah so you, so like shirts would be fine, but then you're not wearing pants. pants. You just wear suspenders, right? Except it, for the suspenders it, won't grip here. You go over. You go over. Yeah. You got to cross. Yeah. <laughs> or if if you're a lady like me, you could wear a, a, like a dress type thing. Why do you have to be a lady to wear a dress? I mean. Yeah. So you went the other way. I was just thinking on, PJ onesies. Depends on what way you, yeah, you, you, you gotta, swing, which is totally <laughs> fine, but... <laughs> But yeah, I also really like it when they like overthink a power. So like we were just doing, <laughs> like, yeah. it's like if this is like if this power was to exist, and you're Maybe unable to be affected by limited friction. To certain parts of the body. Like you would have <laughs> to actually apply that logic. <laughs> it's like, but how does that work? <laughs> Shanine, what's your number three? Okay, my last one is from a book series that I am in the middle of right now, The Sword of Truth. And there's a character, Kaylan. She's what's called a mother confessor. And they're like a super powerful sect that basically has jurisdiction in like the entire country. Um, their power is that if they touch you, they can take control of you um, through basically making you completely submissive to them. Like, do they have a, like, skin touch, or is it just can they touch you through your clothes? How does this work? 
I think they can touch through clothes. Well, that's two P. That's OP. <laughs> it is OP. That's the point of it. <laughs> um, kind of their main role is wait, to make wait. people confess if there's like What's major overpowered. overpowered. Okay. So if there's a major trial that they can't come to a decision about and it's like super serious they can get a confessor to come and like touch this person and make them tell the truth or just make them confess even if it's false or can they only make them tell the truth because if they're just doing what they're told because they're submissive that's just saying hey confess to this information no i mean the confessors are also very lawful so i mean technically they probably could make them lie but that has not come up as of yet okay so this sounds very similar to well not very similar to but kind of like a different take on the the zygons or zygots or whatever in doctor who who are basically shapeshifters but they have to keep Whoever it is they're shifting into, they have to keep that person alive in order to be able to shapeshift into them. So they could pretend to be you, but they have to keep you alive. I, I mean, mean like, a power to force someone to tell the truth. I, I like that idea. If you can only make them yeah. tell the truth, that means you can't, like, falsify them. It's powerful, but it's very useful. Yeah, and, like, her power has come in handy quite a lot as well because people also try to kill her a lot so she suddenly has slaves instead of people trying to kill her if she can touch them Emma what do you got so my number three is a power that is that comes from the wheel of time a series that i very much vouch for um in which it's essentially a wolf brother so a wolf brother is a person who develops a relationship with wolves and gains some wolf-like appearances as a connection or characteristics um so this goes back to one that was similar to Chris's earlier, but it is specific to a series and an animal. Um, and they're essentially able to communicate with wolves through their mind with images and scents. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just a super interesting um, sort of power. It's not really one that's chosen or sort of bestowed. It just sort of happens to some people um and it's within the book or series it's seen as more of a condition than a power but one of the main characters has it as a power or a thing um and it's used and he uses it to sort of his benefit um to like he connects with the local packs of wolves to see and like scout the land to see if there's any bad guys nearby and um just uses those to help support the world and that's just one that i would think would be super cool to have because it's like it's not necessarily animal morphing or like whatever it's just its own unique thing of you you are able to connect with wolves and have a like speak with them but also like you gain some of their physical characteristics and skills as well so it's not fully one or the other it's just a little bit of both but you're still like person so yeah for me um my next one is kind of a combo from infamous second son and that's the ability to control neon and concrete and so I like these in the sense of like, they are so specific that like, well, like obviously like neon is an element, but like, it's not something that's been like concentrated for a long time. 
historically speaking. So the idea of like people could have been control, able to control neon forever, but there wasn't enough of it for them to do. Um, and so I really like that take. Um, another one that they did like promo art for that didn't make it into the game was like the ability to control glass as a power. Um, so yes, yeah, so like those abilities to like manipulate like normal things in our world, but are not just like the normal like fire, ice, those types of things. And so I'm also a big shout out, you know, to like the neon run from Infamous Second Son that makes all other open world games not as cool. But you just get to zoom around buildings and it's awesome. <laughs> Got the zoom zoom. Gotta get you know, gotta get the zoomies. Okay, so th this this to surprise of no one, this is gonna be my favorite ability, and it's the you are what you eat. <laughs> like the, the the trope of, you know, there's a couple characters in my hero, but like where you adopt some attribute of what you've been eating, um, or or your your abilities get stronger. So like uh, from class B, there's oh what's his name, but he. He, he has hard skin, so the more steel, like, he actually eats metal. And it's also in Fairy Tale. Uh, <laughs> but eating metal um, and steel strengthens that ability. Um, but uh, one specifically in My Hero, like, if he eats, he can, like, if, if he's eaten, like, octopus, he can mutate a portion of his body into an octopus arm. And I love that kind of, that's, that's my ability. If I was going to have an ability, I'd do that. Because <laughs> it'd just be like, food exploration all the time and let's see what crazy things i can do <laughs> yeah i feel like i would just get in trouble with this power <laughs> if it's like up oh, ate a potato chip here i am like <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you fully become a potato though it's just that you get it. okay <laughs> here's a real question was this just a thing in my like middle school friend group or did anyone else like do the ako taco thing it know. may just be a thing but like whenever a situation was awkward, someone would just go "Taco Taco" and make their hands into tacos, like taco-shaped things. That's something I would do with this power. I would eat a taco and then go "Taco Taco." I'd make I turn my hands into tacos. We'll hereby call this the bug snacks power. <laughs> but like it doesn't hop in automatically. It's something you have control over. Just saying. <laughs> Yeah. Listeners, let us know um, what your favorite um, uncommon superpowers were or are. In chat, Chunk the Hut brings up Combustion Bending from um, Avatar. And then uh, Deanna calls out, and there's, there's a SpongeBob episode about weird powers. One of them has lava powers. It does not go well. Mm -mm. And then um, Deanna Unless also... Unless you want to make islands, then it goes very well. This is true. I like where your head's at. And then um, Deanna also calls out the Umbrella Academy. I heard a rumor power from Allison. And so, um, yeah, lots of cool stuff. Let us know um, what all you got. Um, we'll be back next week, um, kind of building off of our conversation from earlier with Powder Puff, uh, Power Puff Girls. Um, we're going to do a return to the best adaptations from one media to another. And so you can have your animated thing to live action. You can have your video game to movie. You can have your book to movie, any of those. What, is, what are the best of the best when it comes to cross, um, cross media adaptations? And so. I'm assuming we're all just leaving Lord of the Rings for Chris. Cause that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> you can let Chris go first next week. Uh, <laughs> But listeners, as always, you can find us on our social media as One Geek 411 You can join our Discord server if you want to chat with us between shows. Send us an email at 1stgeek411 at gmail.com. Um, you can also check out our Red Bubble store. Um, you can watch live um, twitch.tv um, slash One Geek 411 Monday nights at 645. You can also find all the gameplay streams that we mentioned earlier on Twitch. And then you can find the videos later on on our YouTube can rate subscribe wherever it is that you listen to podcasts and then you can check out our website onegeek411.com then if you want to chat with us 
You can find us at our personal social media. I am Humar Whittle. I am I'm Not Prepared with an I. I'm the Hoot and Howl on Twitter and Hoot and Howl Tales, T A L E S, on Instagram. And I'm Not So Foreign. And it's been a great week. Wash your hands. Read a book. <laughs>